जय राधा कुंज विहि
Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. So on request, I've been instructed to speak for the remaining days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the next four days on Gaur Leela. So uh, this will be the first in four days of Gaur Leela. And of course, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes are an unlimited ocean of mercy. His spiritual uh, impact in the world is a, is a gigantic topic itself. But I'll just speak of, tonight I'll speak about the pastimes in the ha house of Srivas Thakur, which I found to me is one of the more uh, interesting of all the pastimes. Jaya Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Deva Gauravani Pacharine Nir Vishesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya De Satarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasati Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Hare Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his early part of his life, his life is actually categorized in, in Shastra is the uh, Arikanda, Madhyakanda, and Antyakanda. And in those three realms of his life, he particularly focused on one particular aspect of devotional activity. And in the beginning of his life, he was more in the mood of a scholar he was expert at logic, grammar, nayak, literature. And uh, he was known as Nimai Pandit, the arrogant scholar of Sri Navadweep Dham, <laughs> because he would challenge people and defeat them easily, because <laughs> he's God himself. But using uh, logic and nayak, he would uh, come up to someone and present an argument and then they would present the opposite and he would defeat that and then he would say to them now you defeat my argument and then they couldn't defeat it and then he would defeat his own argument mm -hmm. and reestablish the original argument <laughs> and this way he was known as expert in logic grammar and debate but he was also considered to be arrogant <laughs> Although his arrogance was a planned program in order to show an example. At one point in his maturity, in his early age, he became inspired to visit um, uh, 
where did he go? Uh, he went to, not Katwa, but, uh, hmm. No, he, he went to one particular place. Uh, wasn't Katwa, was, uh, hmm. Anyway, when he went to there, he met his spiritual master, Ishwar Puri. Um, he came into the temple. There was one particular temple of Lord Vishnu. And in the temple, there were many Brahmins standing around the deity of Vishnu, offering beautiful prayers. And in front of the deity, there were piles of garlands and tulsi leaves and various kinds of decorations with such a deep mood of devotion, the Lord was inspired and he became absorbed and started to go into ecstasy. At that time, Ishwar Puri happened to enter into the temple and when he saw Ishwar Puri, he could understand that this is the person who I want to become a disciple of. And so when they saw each other, their natural love for each other awakened and there was a beautiful exchange of embracing, crying, and deep, deep moods of devotion towards each other. A little later on, um, the Lord was at his place in, well, not cut, well, what's that other place, huh? In Gaia, yeah, in Gaia, thank you very much. Yeah, he went to Gaia. Yeah, and so he was at his place, and uh, he was cooking his lunch, and Ishwar Puri just happened to walk in. And he welcomed Ishwar Puri, and Ishwar Puri said, I looks like I have come at the right time. He said, yes, I am just finishing my cooking. And so, you, you, there was, please sit down and I will serve you prasadam. But then Ishwar Puri said, well, you just cooked enough for yourself. How will you eat? <laughs> the Lord said, this is not a problem. Actually, you take, and at the same time, while the Lord was serving his spiritual master, Rama Devi, the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, was cooking in the background, and it just happened to be some prasadam for the Lord. <laughs> she knows exactly what to do, when to do it. <laughs> so she cooked him, he had his meal already made, when he, when he, after he served his original meal, to his spiritual master. And that time, at that time, he actually took shelter of Ishwara Puri. And then, of course, when he returned from Gaya back to Navadvip, he was now a disciple, and he was a completely different personality. Very humble, and always talking about Krishna. <laughs> After some time, the devotees were who were his associates now really became happy because they saw now this arrogant person, Nimai Pandit, has actually become a wonderful devotee of Krishna. And so the Lord started to inaugurate the Sankirtan movement in the Navadvip area. And so regularly the devotees were going out and doing Harinam Sankirtan in the streets. In fact, they would do that the entire day. But then one day, the Lord Chaitanya said to his associates, you know, every day we are going out and chanting, and that is very nice. But what are we doing at night? We're sleeping. Why don't we, we should have kirtan all night also. <laughs> so Srivas, make arrangements, and every night we will have kirtan in your house. But this kirtan will be different. This will be just for those devotees who are very much fixed, how the Lord expressed it, it wasn't really hard, it's not mentioned, but in that particular kirtan, only the most intimate associates of the Lord, such as Advaita Charya and Mukunda, and of course Srivas was there, and many who, who are very, very closely related to the Lord in devotional activity. And in that time when they would have that kirtan, the Lord would always go into ecstasy and dance. <laughs> one time, and of course, no one else was allowed in. The, the doors were locked. And sometimes the people would hear the kirtan from the outside. 
the local villagers, and they would like to, they wanted to come in, but they were refused entry. So some of them could understand, oh, I'm not so advanced, therefore I cannot come in. And others were critical and started to make up lies and stories about what was going on inside. They would say, oh, these, they're not letting us in, in because we are decent people. And what they're doing behind those doors should never be talked about. <laughs> they're, they're, they're attracting young girls and they're doing all kinds of tantric. So they were making up all these stories. You think it's rough nowadays to preach. It was like that when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was here too. <laughs> so, um, of course, their criticism kept going, but still they weren't allowed in. And then one young boy, he came just before the kirtan one night. He was very simple, humble, and he... He was austere by nature. His only diet was milk, that's all. He lived simply on milk. <laughs> and he had heard that Mahaprabhu was dancing every night in Kirtan and he wanted to come and be there. But Sri Vasta, of course, said, oh, I can see you're very simple, humble, and also very devoted, but the Lord doesn't allow anybody in. But I think we can make an exception, but you have to hide. <laughs> so he agreed and came in and hid in, hid in one part of the house. And then uh, the kirtan began, Mukunda started to sing, and the Lord Chaitanya started to go into his ecstasy of devotion, started to dance. But after a few moments, he stopped. And he turned to Srivas. Srivas, is there somebody in this house that shouldn't be here? <laughs> as the Lord could detect it. And Sriva said, well, actually, there is this one young Brahmin. Get him out of here immediately. The Lord became really angry. So as soon as that happened, the boy ran out of his hiding place and fell at the feet of the Lord. And the Lord, um, Sriva said, well, he's very austere. He lives simply on milk, my Lord. And he's, and he's a very nice Brahmin. So as soon as he got up, the Lord said, do you think you can get Krishna simply by drinking milk? <laughs> no milk drinkers allowed. <laughs> and then, of course, he started to chastise the boy. And he, the boy was very humble, and he just stood there listening. And then after the Lord stopped, and he turned around the boy and started to leave. But while he was leaving, he was walking out. He started to think, you know, Boy, the Lord is so kind. I did get to see his dancing. <laughs> and then Lord Chaitanya, of course we know, he's the indwelling super soul in the heart of all living entities, and he knows everyone's feelings. So immediately he called him back. <laughs> and he said, give up this milk drinking <laughs> and become a devotee of Krishna. In other words, he was proud of the fact that he was living very simply and of course he was humble, but he had this slight pride from his austerities. Because when sometimes people perform austerities, they become powerful. Because mm -hmm. austerities make you powerful. But they can also make you hard-hearted too. In this case, it wasn't true. But because he had gained so much, what we say, success in knowledge by his austerities, because austerities can lead to higher knowledge. It doesn't lead to bhakti. It can lead to bhakti if the austerities are in, li in line with the guru's instructions. But in this case, he was just performing these austerities, and the Lord told him to give it up and uh, just worship Krishna in devotion. And he invited him to become one of his associates, and so the boy did it after that. Because he was humble, because he took the, the chastising, of, chastising of the Lord as a great benediction for him, the Lord was merciful to him. This is also a very important principle to understand that sometimes we think that chastisement is something not good, but actually it's always for the benefit and we can appreciate it because it helps us to 
to gain something in our spiritual life, get rid of something, to gain something, to become more humble. Something will happen if you accept chastisement as, the, as a principle of spiritual growth. Because who are we? How much do we know? We know very little, and somehow we think we know more than what we actually know. And even if we do know more, it's still not much, <laughs> comparatively speaking. So, therefore, when there's something coming from the authorities to help us gain uh, a little bit of better understanding of how to practice devotional service, it's greatly appreciated. Another time, uh, again, in the house of Sri Vastakur, the kirtan was just about to start. And this time, nobody knew it, but Sri Vastakur's mother-in-law decided to hide in the house and watch the kirtan. So these, you know, I don't know if in India they have these big metal earthen pots, they're really big. They're as big as a, uh, a, a man standing up. So she hid behind one of these pots <laughs> and she wanted to watch the kirtan. And then the Lord, again, the kirtan began. He began to dance. And again, he stopped and said, Srivas, I know somebody who's not, is, shouldn't be here, is here. My dear Lord, there's only your devotees are here. All right. So the Lord went back and started to dance again in kirtan. And then again he stopped. Srivas, there must be somebody here. Check. So Srivas looked and he found his mother hiding, mother-in-law hiding behind the pot. Of course, we like mother-in-laws sometimes, <laughs> depending. And so, but he was very enthusiastic to please the Lord, so he removed his mother-in-law. <laughs> Uh, another time, uh, the kirtan was going on, and just at the beginning of a kirtan, uh, at that time, Srivas Thakur's son, who was only four years old, he had come down with rheumatic fever, and, and he was lying in a different section of the house in bed. And at one point, the boy left his body, he died. And so the relatives in the family were lamenting, and they were crying, and. That crying was a little bit loud. So Shivas came back to see what was going on. And they, said, they informed him that your son has just died. He said, okay, but don't cry, don't, don't cry so loud. You're going to disturb Lord Chaitanya's kirtan. <laughs> he, wasn't, he was more concerned that Lord Chaitanya doesn't get disturbed. This was his dedication. So the kirtan continued. And... Uh, after seven and a half hours, Lord Chaitanya stopped his kirtan and said, Srivas, I feel that there's some calamity happened in this house. My dear Lord, when you're here, how could there be any calamity? But since you asked, my son died. Really? When? Oh, about seven and a half hours ago. Where is he? He's in the bedroom, let's go. So he went back there and the boy was laying there, the relatives are still there crying. So Lord Chaitanya walks in and he walks right up to the boy, places his hand on the chest of the boy and he says, my dear Sri son of Srivas, why have you left? Where did you go? And the boy rose up, <laughs> he sat up, he looked around and he said, my dear Lord, by your will, I have taken birth in this family, and by your will, my time is up in this particular body, and by your will, I'm on my way to my next destination. So when the family members heard that, they all became enlightened in transcendental knowledge of the difference between the soul and the body. And then the boy laid down and he died again. <laughs> And, but Lord Chaitanya was so pleased with Srivas that Srivas Thakur 
didn't even concern himself so much with the death of his son as opposed to not wanting to disturb the Lord's kirtan. So Lord Chaitanya wanted to do something to please Shiva, so he personally did the last rite ceremony. So he arranged for everything. They took the body of the boy down to the Ganga, and he performed the last bathing for the boy and uh, all the ceremony that goes along with the, the departed soul. He did that just to please Sri Thakur. And at one point during that time, there were other devotees there. He said, oh Sri how can I ever leave you? You are so dear to me. And then the devotees were thinking, what is he saying? How could he ever leave? What is he saying? They couldn't figure it out. Nor did the Lord say anything more. But then again, that was the first indication that Lord Chaitanya gave that he was going to take sannyas. He gave five indications, and that was the first one. And he, he didn't tell the devotees directly, but he told, them, he told things, what we say, through different messages. The second time, when he, the Lord was walking along the Ganga, he was walking in that area, there was one Brahmin there, and this Brahmin was a person who got refused to come into the house of Shiva's. And he was a Paka Brahmin, but he was also a little you know, pr proud of being a Brahmin. So when he saw Lord Chaitanya, he called him Nimai Pandit. He said, hey, Nimai Pandit, you know, I'm a Brahmin, and I follow all the rules of Brahminical life, and I wanted to come in for the kirtan, and you didn't let me in. <laughs> and so then he wanted to retaliate, so he took out his Brahmin thread, and he tied it, and, it and he snapped his thread, and because that's the way you curse people. So he cursed Lord Chaitanya. He said, I curse you that you will never enjoy material happiness. And the Lord started to dance. He said, thank you very much. <laughs> and then the Brahmin thought, what did I say? No, no, whatever you said was good. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm grateful. What did, and that was the second indication that the Lord, because to take sannyas means goodbye to material happiness. <laughs> so yeah, so that was the second indication. Of course, there was always threats from the outside people because some people didn't like the, the fact that they couldn't go in. So they wanted to make trouble. So there was one Shakta worshiper. He was a worshiper of Durga Devi. So he wanted to make Srivas Thakur look bad. So he took the paraphernalia that you use to worship Durga Devi, like a red rose, a bottle of wine, some certain kind of RT paraphernalia, and he put it on the doorstep of Srivas in the evening so everyone could see it. And then when Srivas came out, he saw all this paraphernalia for worshiping Durga, and he said, and he called the people. This was in the morning. He said, look, now you know what I do. <laughs> he wasn't at all trying to say, who did this? I'm being framed. What is this? Who, who's, you know. he, he just called everybody and said, now you know who I am. <laughs> but nobody believed it. <laughs> they wouldn't believe it. So this person, his name was Gopal Chapala. Now, he actually committed offense to, to Shiva Stakor. And because he committed offense, three days later he came down with a, a severe case of leprosy. And he had to leave the general area and live on the banks of the Ganges. So he was living there practically hardly anything to eat and suffering from his leprosy. One day, Lord Chaitanya had just happened to pass by. This was about a month later. And he saw this person, and this person ran up and fell at Lord Chaitanya's feet. And he, of course, you could understand Lord Chaitanya was a great personality. I don't think he knew he was the Lord, but he called him, my dear Lord, 
you know, this, uh, I'm suffering so much from this leprosy. Please, please, show me some mercy, please. Lord Chaitanya said, what you're suffering now is nothing. You, what you're going to suffer in the future is much worse than this. You have offended Srivas, and then he turned around and walked away. That was it. So that person had no recourse. And finally, about six months later, the Lord again passed that area. And that same person, Gopal Chapla, was a brahmana. This time he was more humble <laughs> and more repentant. And, and this time he really pleaded. And the Lord became merciful and said, all right, I can't forgive you, but if Srivast does, then you are forgiven. So he went to Srivas, fell at Lord Srivas Thakur's feet and begged for forgiveness. When we commit an offense to a Vaishnava, uh, it's the worst possible thing. There's two things in Krishna consciousness that make your spiritual life difficult. One is poor sadhana, and the other one is Vaishnava Aparada. Keeps good, not poor sadhana, even average sadhana is not good. One has to have strong sadhana. That means one has to chant 16 rounds nicely early every day, read Srila Prabhupada's books, associate with devotees, take part in the activities of Krishna consciousness. Sadhana has to be strong because this is Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga is, is difficult to practice Krishna consciousness. The atmosphere is contrary to spiritual life everywhere. And so strong sadhana is the key to staying fixed. But still, one has to be very diligent and aware how we deal with devotees and make sure we don't criticize devotees or what we say, do something that will be offensive. So this person was offensive. But Srivas didn't take offense, so he forgave him. And this person wanted to, now wanted to take initiation from Srivas, so he asked Srivas for initiation. And Srivas said, well, actually, I don't think I'm your spiritual master, but I know someone who is. And he gave him a name, he told him, I think his name was Vamsidas or Vamsidari, I can't remember. You go to him and you fall at his feet and you tell him, I sent you, and you take shelter for him and become his disciple. He's very kind. So he did, and he got initiated, and he got a new name. I think his name was Devananda. That was his new name, Devananda. And he changed so much that he used to write poetry and songs and letters, and all of it was about glorifying devotees. Instead, of, he never again even thought of finding fault with devotees. He was always glorifying the devotees, speaking whatever good qualities they have, he would make it sound even greater than what they actually had. And uh, you can read it. I have actually a copy of that text of his prayers to the devotees. It's really beautiful. There's nothing like it how much he actually developed genuine love for all of the devotees. Um, he got the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. I mean, first he got the mercy of Srivas Thakur, and then he got the mercy of his spiritual master and Lord Chaitanya. So sometimes people ask, well, you know, I've committed Vaishnava Aparat before, and I don't have any leprosy. <laughs> well, just wait. <laughs> it's coming <laughs> because Lord Chaitanya did one thing when he was personally present he speeded up the reactions to offenses he speeded up the mercy of bhakti he would give persons he would say love of God <laughs> and they, right then they wouldn't even have to go through the whole process. They get love of God right on the spot. He, he did that many times to persons that he felt very inclined to. But those that were offensive, they also got the reactions immediately. 
But this is how bhakti works when the Lord is present. Everything becomes quick. <laughs> but it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. So we have to be very diligent to um, always remain strict. If you have a good sadhana, generally you won't commit Vaishnava right? Because if our sadhana is weak, the mind is hard to control. When the mind is hard to control, then the mind may cause us to do things or say things that we really are sorry for later. <laughs> okay, so there was one other pastime that I wanted to mention. Hmm. Well, these were some of the, the wonderful pastimes in the house of Sri Thakur. And of course, that gradually led to the devotees going out regularly. Of course, the devotees were going out regularly and doing Harinam Sankirtan. Can't remember that other pastime. But the, okay, so these are a few of the wonderful pastimes of Lord Chaitanya in the house of Sri Thakur. Oh, oh yeah, okay. One day, uh, Lord Chaitanya was with Srivas and he said, Hey, Srivas, you don't work. You don't have a, you have a big family. How do you maintain yourself? How do you feed everybody? Because he had four brothers, three brothers, and they all had their families and they all living together in a joint family. So he said, the Lord said to him, how do you live? How do you maintain? So Shivas did something to respond, which was unusual. He went, <laughs> clapped three times. And that was his answer. <laughs> the Lord said, what does that mean? And then Shivas did, one day, if Krishna doesn't feed me, Two days, if he doesn't take care of me and my family members. Three days, if he doesn't, if he forgets about us, then I drown myself in the Ganges. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya, when he heard that, whoa, he roared so loud, the universe shook. <laughs> he was so happy. He said, Srivas! Even if Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, has to go from door to door with a begging bowl to live, there will always be food in your house. He had faith. He had complete faith that simply by serving the Lord in devotion, the Lord would take care of him. So I tell this story, and sometimes people say, does it really work? <laughs> I say, it does, but there's one quality that you must have, and that is called faith. <laughs> if you have that faith, it works. If you don't, don't try it. <laughs> In other words, if you believe that Krishna will take care of you simply by engaging in devotional service, there's nothing else you need. But if you don't have that faith, then that lack of faith won't allow you to get the full mercy. The mercy comes with the faith, faith and with the activity caused by that faith, like that. That was Srivas. So it was another story where the devotees were having kirtan, and Advaita Charya said, let's sing the glories of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we're going to sing Jai Sachi Nandana. We're not going to sing Hare Krishna. <laughs> he was strong about this. He's saying, we're going to sing Jai Sachi Nanda, Gor Hari. So the devotees were a little nervous because they know Lord Chaitanya wasn't at the kirtan. They know that if Lord Chaitanya knew that they were singing his names, he would get upset. But Advaita Charya was not going to listen to anybody. Come on, we're going to sing because we know who he is. So he was encouraging her. And so the devotees got into it and they were singing Jai Sachi Nandana Gaura Hari, 
Jai Sachi Nandana Gauda. So Lord Chaitanya was walking and he heard the kirtan, so he decided to join the kirtan. But as he was getting closer and closer, he heard what was being sung. And then he stopped and he thought, what are the devotees singing? And then the devotees noticed here that he was there and they started to, you know, stop. And Dwight the Chari said, no, sing louder, louder, sing louder. <laughs> And so they didn't know what to do because Advaita Acharya, you know, that he's a leader also. <laughs> so some of them were singing and some weren't sure. <laughs> so, but Lord Chaitanya, he saw the whole thing and he turned around and went back to his place, walked into his room, opened the door, lay down in his bed and went to sleep. <laughs> And later on, Sri Thakur came. And Lord Chaitanya had woken up, and he saw Sri He said to Sri Vas, Sri Vas, what are the devotees singing? Why are they not singing the names of Krishna? What are they singing? So Sri did something. This was the morning time. So he took his hand and went like this. So Lord Chaitanya said, what are you doing? I'm covering the sun with my hand. Covering the sun with your hand? How can you do that? It's not possible to cover the sun with your hand. No, it's, of course it's not. it's not. It's not possible to you for you to hide from us. <laughs> it's like trying to cover the sun. <laughs> So Lord Chaitanya didn't say anything. <laughs> I'll tell one. What happened? Oh, okay. All of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are nice. I'll tell you one that's very instructive. They're all instructive because we can learn something in our devotional life from all these pastimes. But this one is very instructive. So it was a big kirtan and the devotees were chanting and dancing. Lord Chaitanya was there. And it was going on and on and on and on. Finally, who was it? I think it was Nityananda. He said, my dear Lord, you can go on forever, but the devotees are getting tired. <laughs> so I think it's good if you stop the kirtan. So the Lord did. So then the Lord went to his room, and, but he, he was also tired. So when he got to his room, instead of going into the room, he sat right in the doorway with his feet across the doorway. And now it was time for his personal servant, whose name was... No, no it was... Uh, He's called the uh, Shankar Pandit. Shankar Pandit. He's called the pillow of the Lord. Shankar Pandit. So Shankar Pandit had to come in and, and he would massage the, leg, the legs of the Lord before the Lord would rest. And so when he came, he saw the Lord was sitting in the doorway and he couldn't do his service. So he said to the Lord, can you move aside so I can come in? Because you can't walk over. To walk over someone is an offense. <laughs> Sometimes we see that devotees sitting close together. Somebody walks over a person's foot or his leg, put your foot over, that's an offense. Because the soul is in the body and you're, putting, you're walking over the soul like that. So Lord Chaitanya said, I'm too tired. I can't move. And then Shankar Pandit didn't know what to do. So I think it was maybe, maybe it was Govinda. Yeah, I think it was Govinda. Yeah, it was Govinda. Shankar Pandit was another person who had personal service too. And then uh, he said again, my dear Lord, can you just move aside so I can come in and and massage your legs? I'm too tired, I can't move. 
So he didn't know what to do. He wanted to do his service, but he could, didn't want to commit an offense. So he asked a third time, and then the Lord looked at him and said, do what your mind tells you to do. So then he walked over the Lord and came in. So he walked over the Lord. And then he started to massage the legs of the Lord. And then the Lord fell asleep. So 45 minutes later, the Lord woke up. And Govinda is still there. So the Lord said to Govinda, Govinda, why don't you go and take your prasadam? He said, I can't because, you know, you're, you're in the doorway. And the Lord said, well, how did you get in? And then Govinda remained quiet. And he was thinking, for your service, I can commit an offense, but for my own sense gratification, I cannot. Very instructive. That uh, sometimes for the service of the Lord, we digress from the principles, not the principles, but some of the details of etiquette. And, uh, but a devotee will never do that for his own personal gain, but sometimes that happens. So that was a very instru instructive pastime. That for the service of the Lord, sometimes we have to take a little risk. <laughs> it's like that. Okay, so we're five minutes to the closing of the class. Any comments or questions? Anything about Lord Chaitanya? His pastimes? Yes. Uh, Ananda Vardhana. Who, where'd you get that name from? No, so mercy. That's a really nice name. Whoever gave you that name must be a good guy. Hare <laughs> Krishna. Hare Krishna. I heard the explanation that first they they were performing uh, Sankirtana in Shriva Sangam and then. After some time, they decided that it's, it, it's time that they go outside to perform Sankirtan on the streets. Yeah. But you said that they, are all, they, they also performed Sankirtan before this. That's the way I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, but that one in Sri Sangha was different. That was only for the intimate devotees. Not everyone could come in. Only the only the the one those who who are his confidential associates were allowed for that kirtan. But that's what I heard. I heard that pastime from a very elevated personality. <laughs> that he said, "Well, you know, we're going out and we're chanting all day, but we're sleeping at night." <laughs> so it might have been right at the beginning when the Lord began his kirtan program. But then right after that, they started to go out regularly, and that's when the Kasi came and the Smarta Brahmins were complaining. And that led to the march on the John Kasi's house, which is amazing pastime. Yes, Mr. A, the big A, Alex. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for sharing these nice pastimes. I'm wondering um, what kind of instruments they were using in Kirtan. Um, they were using only Mridanga and Kartals or? Yeah, Mridanga and Kartals. Yeah, Mridanga, Kartals, yeah. What else? Sometimes you hear that there was a, in Kirtan that Veena was playing and sometimes. But that wouldn't be on the outdoor Kirtans. It might have been in the house. They would play Veena. Like that. Yeah. Huh? Trumpet. 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 Oh, yeah. It's kind of like a horn, right? <laughs> a big horn. 
Yeah. You can call it a trumpet, yeah. And another thing, uh, they were also clapping with hands, like yeah. loudly. Or Sometimes they didn't use any instruments, and they just sang and they clapped. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada talks about that. Sometimes there was no instruments, and they would just just clap. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Jai Sisi Panchatatva Ki Jai. Uruva Mitra. Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I wonder, like, I like these topics, uh, these past times uh, when uh, Sri was pandit, uh, they didn't have a foot, so and then Mahaprabhu asked them, like, you know, and then they surrender, said that the, the, the needed qualification is faith, faith to to wait, like, this sounds like, like Python yoga. So I remember one lecture you gave that you said that when you are really dedicated to uh, worshiping, uh, that no separate endeavor needed, or either if, if you lack of some material qualification that these qualifications uh, Krishna gives. Yeah. So is this correct? Yeah, and he says it. He says, I carry what you lack and I preserve what you have. One who surrenders to the Lord, whatever you're lacking, he makes up the difference. And whatever, when you surrender, you don't, ne you never lose anything. He preserves that. Aniyas chintayantuman ye jina paryupasate teisham teisham eva nukam teisham niti biyukta anam yoga shema vahami aham yoga shema vahami aham I carry what you lack. Yeah, Krishna consciousness is like that. Krishna, every moment, is helping the devotee. The more you surrender, the more Krishna is with you, making sure everything goes on nicely. It's all based on your surrender. Krishna is reciprocating. But even, even in proportion to the surrender, Krishna was always helping his devotee. He reminds them what they should be doing. Prabhupada also says, Sometimes the devotee is not, is not sure which service they should do first. And Prabhupada said, then Krishna will tell you, we do this one first and then do that one next and do that one next. So he's coming through our intelligence and we're thinking we're doing it. But that's Krishna because Krishna says, Sarvasya Jaham Riddhisani Visto. Mata Smirti Jnana Mapohanam Cha. And so he's the intelligence, he's the memory. He can also... He's also forgetfulness, too. We don't really understand how much Krishna is so much part of everything we do. He's, he's always with his devotee. It's just hard sometimes, I found it like I, uh, that these instructions, these informations are more clear or more <laughs> strong, so it's easier to follow. Sometimes it looks like it's hard to be patient. It's hard to be patient, to, to, to wait for another direction. In relationship to your service, you mean? Like generally. Mm -hmm. like you said that uh, Krishna is uh, perceiving uh, information through intelligence. Yeah, it's happening every minute. <laughs> if, you, if, you want, if, you, if you want to serve the Lord, the Lord will help you. If you want to engage in sense gratification, they'll help you also. <laughs> but for his devotee, sometimes when the devotee wants the wrong thing, he doesn't help you. Sometimes. Now, if you, you tell the Lord, I want to enjoy like this, and the Lord says, not good. <laughs> and you say, but I want to. And he'll say, you're going to suffer. And you say, I'm going to do it. And he says, all right, go. <laughs> and then you suffer and you think, you run back and you say, oh my God, what happened, Lord? What happened? I told you. You didn't listen. <laughs> 
So he tells you through the intelligence and he tells you in the association of other devotees. That's why devotee association is so important because we learn so much about how to execute devotional service in association with devotees. Krishna is always there. The, the stronger your desire, the more you can feel his presence. When your desire is weak, it's hard to feel his presence, but he's there also. But as he says, yayatam mam prapadyante tam sataiva bhajami aham. Mama vartmanu vartante manusya parta sarvasyaha. So as you approach me, I reciprocate. But even sometimes he goes, he goes beyond what we approach. Prabhupada would always tell how his father used to say, whatever you can get, what can you give Krishna with two hands that he's holding with ten? And what can you keep in two hands that Krishna has taken away with ten? <laughs> Krishna has ten hands. That means the ten directions. Like that. But Krishna can take away everything or he can give you everything. <laughs> but a devotee wants, only wants to please the Lord and only wants to serve the devotee wants to purify their heart and make advancement in spiritual life. So the Krishna will always provide that opportunity for us. But if you're half in Krishna consciousness and half in Maya, you'll see your choices side by side. <laughs> you'll think, which one should I do? Well, last night I came to the temple, so this tonight there's a good movie going on, so yeah. I think I'll go for the movie, and tomorrow maybe I'll go to the temple. So something for me and something for Krishna. And you don't make any advancement like that. <laughs> He's the indwelling super soul. And the more you are serious, the more you can feel his presence. Even if you're not serious, he's still working to help you. Through the devotees, through the spiritual master, through the material energy, somehow. Mm -hmm. And patience is one of the symptoms of surrender. But patience can be, uh, what's the word? Those who, you can avoid impatience when two things will help you avoid impatience. One is regular association with devotees because in devotee association you can enjoy Krishna consciousness. And the other thing is learning the philosophy. The more you learn the philosophy, the more you understand how everything works and then patience becomes more natural, more easy. That's Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he talks about that. If you don't know the philosophy or how everything works, you're going to get impatient sometimes. And sometimes you give up because you're expecting things to happen and they're not happening. Or you're expecting things not to happen and something's happening. <laughs> So knowledge of how the process works helps us to develop patience. There was one devotee, he came to Krishna consciousness. This was in the early days. He was Hayagriva, the, the original one of the first devotees ever to meet Prabhupada. So he was there in the preaching center Prabhupada started. So he said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, 
Prabhupada. He was very Prabhupada. I have been chanting and practicing Krishna consciousness for one year now, but I don't have love of God. Prabhupada said, oh, one year. Hmm. How long have you been in the material world? <laughs> so yes, um, patience. For men, men have less patience than women. <laughs> the reason why women have more patience than men is because they have to deal with the men. That's why. <laughs> That's why they have more patience than men. But patience is a feminine quality because women have to be patient, otherwise they can't fulfill their, you know, their desires. So women tend to be more patient than men. And it's a feminine quality because Krishna speaks about the feminine qualities in the Bhagavad Gita. In the 18th chapter, and he reckon, mentions patience as one of the feminine qualities. Like that. It's a quality for everyone, but women generally are more patient than men. So if you feel impatient, just ask a lady. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> yeah. Pashienza. My mother would say, Pashienza. That's Italian for patience. I guess you know that. <laughs> Okay, so thank you for being so patient. Oh, it's, uh, it was amazing, <laughs> amazing, amazing answer. Yeah, and this is all the answers that come by way of Shastra <laughs> and Guru. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai, Sri Panchatattva ki jai.